Welcome back to another election edition of Meet Victoria with Caleb Shaw, powered by Thrive Fuel Digital Marketing. It is, keep in mind guys, early voting is February 14th through the 25th, and election day is March 1st. Now, I'm excited for this interview because this is a, 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 a race that's going on that I don't know a whole lot about, and I'm really excited for the opportunity to, to meet one of the candidates, but also to learn about the office and educate myself a little bit. So. Without further ado, if you wouldn't mind, my friend, please introduce yourself and, and tell me a little bit about your background and then we'll get into the office that you're running for. No problem. Thank you, Caleb. And it was just such a beautiful drive here coming into Victoria. I'm LJ Francis and um, originally from Jamaica, came here um, about 2006. And, you know, when I was in Jamaica, education was or like our freedom, right? It was a very strong um, just pursuit of excellence in education and when I came here I came with that same drive and that enabled me to um, pursue my education. I am an engineer by trade living in Corpus Christi, New Aces County engineer and I've just been involved with education my whole life. Um, actually what I do is I work with um, our local teachers and two things that I'm really proud of is being able to supplement um, education for our students in the form of um, some experiential learning, Caleb. And students don't really get a lot of time outside the classroom, and I saw that here in the Coastal Bend, and I was able to work with teachers to provide that for them through a grant that I got through the um, National Science Foundation. Um, brought about $200,000 to this area. Um, teachers from all over, including um, teachers here from Victoria, were able to participate. So I, I really saw that need and I feel that need. Um, also very active at um, the American Society of Civil Engineers where we do have a focus on education as well and I participate on the state level in those committees. So that, that's, that's my background. Um, most of my career has been in project management engineering so I'm a problem solver. I see things that need to get done and I just form coalitions and, 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 and get get it done you know yes sir well again as I kind of said in the opening I don't know a lot about the State Board of Education shame on me I should but you know as I started covering these election things I realized there's a whole lot of offices that I don't know as much about as I thought I did you know and and this is one of them can you tell me what the role of, of the State Board of Education and and more importantly the seat you're, that you're running for what is it and, and why is it important Sure. So the State Board of Education is, a, is an elected body at the state level. It has 15 elected members separated in what they call districts. Now this district that I'm running for is District 2 and it starts in Hidalgo County and it runs all the way um, up the Gulf of Mexico coast to um, Matagorda County actually and it has some northern counties along the road so 14 counties total. And what they do, Caleb, is they set the standards, the educational standards for K through 12 education. So everything um, from what the student learn in the classroom, they call them TEKS, Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, to the selection of textbooks, and I know we've heard a lot of debate on that recently. Um, uh, Caleb, they also review and provide um, final final acceptance of or teacher certification. So there's a body that reviews what teachers need to know and the State Board of Education also provides oversight for that. Got it. Now is this for public schools only or is this both public and private or, or which, who does this hit or who, who do they oversee? Which, which set of schools? Um, these are for public schools and mind you, um, so your ISDs, your independent school districts and charter schools which are also public schools. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, you know, you kind of already answered this, but I want to give you a chance to, uh, it, 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 can't even get the words out. I want to give you a chance <laughs> to expand on this a little bit more. Are you, how many people are in this race that you're running for? So right now we're in what we call a primary season. Okay. And I have one other opponent in the Republican primary. I'm a Republican candidate. Um, so it's just me and one other person right now for the primary. Gotcha. After the and primary. If you win this, will you have a Democratic opponent? Yes. After, um, and that's funny because this, this seat was previously held by a Democrat in the Valley, and there are now five persons running on the Democratic side. So I will definitely have an opponent <laughs> if yes, I win. Sir. Yes, sir. Well, why are you the right guy for the job instead of, uh, instead of somebody else on the left or even your opponent? Why, why you? 
Well, Caleb, I, I, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, coming from Jamaica, we had this strong drive for excellence. And one of the things that I see today is that there's so much um, social agenda and bureaucracy in our public schools. And I was fortunate enough not to have that. Um, I feel like students right now, they're being forced to, one, learn a, a lot of the things on that uh, STAR testing, which I think needs a whole nother revamping, but that's another conversation. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, um, CRT is, has sneaked into our school, and what I mean by that is the critical race theory. You know, they're basically telling kids, Caleb, that if you're a certain skin color, that you should be either offended or you're an oppressor or feeling oppressed. And I never had that in my education. As a matter of fact, I never even know that that was something important until I came to America. So I am the only candidate that can see through a lens that has no color, right, Caleb? And that's very important for our kids right now and parents as I've met them on the campaign trail. They just want their, their children to have a good education, one without the social agenda and one without a push um, that, you know, will give them excellence, give them that push to know that they're learning the actual um, fundamentals of the subject to be successful. Caleb, when you look at the statistics right now, we know that um, about 40% of Texas uh, budget goes to education, yet our students are failing. You know, they can't read well, they're not writing well, and Caleb, they're not even doing math well either. Mm -hmm. So for those reasons, and being a, an engineer, knowing how to problem solve, I see this problem and I know how to form coalitions to solve it. And, and that's one of the main things why me as a candidate for, or, um, for the Republicans and for everyone who loves education because unfortunately it shouldn't be a, a, a partisan issue. And there are certain things that I believe would work best and one of those things is to give parents the right to educate their child as they see fit. Is that along the lines of school choice? Is that what you're getting at? Yes, that, that's something I'm very passionate about. Um, you know, in order for us to have an education that is excellent, everyone, including children, and even the system needs to be challenged. And I feel like parents know their children best, and they definitely um, have a stake in this. And they are the persons that will make the better choice in how and what and what type of education best fits their their child. Yes, sir. And, and you know, I, I don't think I could agree more with you on that. And But one of the things I hear, one of the critiques of, of school choice is, well, if you allow the parents a choice, then the the public schools are going to die. Or the, the these schools that aren't as desired because they're not producing, they're going to go away and they're not going to make the cut. Well, my first reaction is, Okay, you know, if they're not making the grade, if they're if, if they're not producing, then let's let the cream rise to the top, and let's mm -hmm. let the best uh, produce. And, and admittedly, again, I'm I'm ignorant to how all the workings of it go, but you know, I notice one of the things here in, in the structure of the school system and their funding and all that. It seems to almost pit the taxpayers against the ISDs and against this because our teachers here they work hard, but they have needs. They're, they're, a lot of these buildings are crumbling, and some of it is poor decisions made in the past where mm -hmm. maintenance wasn't maintained, et cetera. But then some of it also is, is just the fact that these things are aging and, and they need money to, to fix them. But our community is about taxed out, you know, and, and our, our inflation is going, job wages aren't rising to meet that, yet the schools are always needing more money. And, and they're, they're hemorrhaging money and they, they have some very real needs that need to be fixed. But the taxpayers, I would argue, they're, they're just about tapped out. And right. it's causing a division between, you know, and I would say between the, the, the school districts and the communities because, you know, the short answer is I would love our schools to have all brand new buildings and everything be new and, and the best technology for them. But it, I just don't think our community can afford it. And, and then the teachers and the students and, and everybody, they kind of get upset because they're like, why isn't the community supporting us? And, and I don't think that it's not that they don't support them. It's just that you run out of funds eventually. And so what do we do, or, or is this something that your office or you, more importantly, if you got on, is there something that we can do to, to, to bridge the gap between taxpayers and schools to where they're, they're not at odds with each other and, and, and for one to prosper, the other has to suffer? You know, is, 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 I like the school choice. I like that. Is, 
what are we missing? Why does it get shot down so much? Why does it seem like this is about as much as people talk about it, and then it's and then it gets nixed as soon as it goes anywhere. Um, is that because of all the special interest or the teachers unions or why? So, uh, Caleb, I'll say a couple of things about that, and and you are right. Um, in Texas and in many other places, school choice gets a, a bad rap, and you know it. It's frankly just because I believe that you know. People have been complacent and comfortable for a long time. I do appreciate and I, I really love the work that the local ISDs are doing, and they do a phenomenal job. But one thing that I've seen is at the state level, Caleb, there is this top-down approach to what school should look like. And at the state level and the State Board of Education that I'm aspiring to be on, they set the standards. And when you have standards and more laws, that translate into more programs and more money. So right now, if you talk to someone at the ISD level, the administrators would say, man, we are tapped out. We can't afford to yet do another program you know, for, for the students you know, all in a limited time, because time is limited. So one of the main things that I'm going to be looking at, every five years we review each subject, the, the TEKS I mentioned before, on what exactly students need to learn. And I mean, we had it right, the essential knowledge and skills. Caleb, our students need to be able to master essential concepts. And when we start overloading them with you know, everything that someone at the legislator thinks is a good idea, that does not work for students. And I do believe that teachers are, you know, they're professionals that know what to, what to do in the classroom. And they are, are also best able to work alongside parents to form an education that fits that child. Because I always say this, um, one size fits all does not work for students. Every student um, is unique and they need to have an education that best, su best suits them. Now, if we look a little bit closer to the actual funding, um, so a charter school, and that's kind of the group that people look at for school choice, you know, they get funding from um, the state level. There's a two-tiered system for funding. You have local taxes, which the ISD, that, that's the local taxes that um, people pay here, like in, in Victoria County, and that gets shared amongst all the schools in, in, in that area. But charter schools, they don't get that benefit. They get another part of fund, which ISDs also benefit from, and that's the state funding. Now that, that has been diminishing over the years due to the formula that they use to um, calculate school funding. So what some ISDs really believe is that if you have more charter schools, that means less money for me in their schools. But the thing to note is that if you have a good product, and the other thing that I failed to mention is in, in Jamaica, Caleb, I've seen where after this, the grade six level, you have people wanting their students to be in the public school because we focus on rigor. And that's something that I really want to bring back to Texas public school. We need to focus on rigor. We need to challenge students. We, we need to challenge parents to help these students because it is, it, it's, education is something that, um, as I'm also fond of saying, is that it, it takes a community to really make sure that our students get molded in the right way. And parents, need to um, help teachers, and teachers need to ensure that there's transparency in order for parents to be able to see what is going on in the classroom, you know, what their students are learning. And Caleb, this is why there is this disconnect. There is not enough communication. We're not allowing that transparency to, to be had for, you know, what the educators are doing, because parents don't know what they're doing. And then um, the administrators are not able to garner what um, parents are thinking also. So it's this kind of lack of information that really fuels the fire, if you may, where one side is not understanding the other. And you know, school choice and charter schools, they provide this other alternative. And some parents, that works for them, and people should have choice. And that is really my belief. You know, anyone voting for me know that I will always vote for people to have choice. And that right now in education, I believe the parents should have a very strong um, say in what goes on in the classroom for their child. Yes, sir. 
great answer. I would love to dig deeper into that. We're already past time, but I want to ask you very quickly, and, it, and it's kind of a, a long question that I'm going to ask you to answer <laughs> fast, but you know, I know when I graduated, I, I thought I was ready for the real world, and I walked out, and I realized I wasn't in a lot of areas. I didn't know mm. how to write checks. I didn't know how to write. There was, I felt like I learned a lot of useless information in high school that didn't really translate to needing it in, in real life. And one of the things that I've seen, uh, uh, and, and it was all about college, Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've seen here lately is is the push of people, hey, it's, it's okay to go to a trade school, to go learn to be an electrician or a plumber or one of these guys. And, you know, there's still somewhat of a stigma of like, oh, why would you, you need to go to college? And I'm like, why? Right. That guy's making $95 an hour and he has a skill and a trade. And, and so are do you are you for these these different outlets available to students if, if maybe college hey, I don't see myself going to a four-year university, but I would love to go learn to be a welder or learn to go be an electrician or something like that. Are you a, are you a proponent of those types of programs in the schools to allow more options for students? Oh, definitely, Caleb. You know, it, and if you, if you, if your viewers look on my Facebook page and on my push guard, that's something that I highlight there. I want to be able to ensure that students are either ready for college or the workforce, because that's very important. Having a trade, having a skill, and see, I use, even though I, I went to college and um, you know, had some advanced training, I see engineering as a trade, you know, but students need the ability to go to plumbing, electrical school, and that needs to happen, and they need to be able to be funneled into that area from, from young. You know, you see tendencies of, of children you know, as they're, they're going through their, their um, K through 12 education. And at the state level, I would champion an approach where we, we, we engage students who are apt to certain careers very earlier on. So, you know, they're more focused, they're excited, they wanna come to school yeah, and learn because this is what they like to do. Mm -hmm. Right, they're passionate. And that's something that I really feel strong about. I mean, I have a son right now that he's finished college and even though me and his mom are college graduate, he doesn't want to go to college. So, you know, we're encouraging him to do a trade and he enjoys doing that. And I think that there is, as you said, a certain stigma where even if you're going to trade school, you should feel some sort of shame. Mm -hmm. But there is no shame, Caleb. These people are what we need. They, they keep um, especially engineers, when we design buildings, we need people to build it. Mm -hmm. They keep the world running, Absolutely. and I, I think it's a disservice when we do that to children by not encouraging these things, by not making them feel proud that, you know, this is just another option. This is not less, you shouldn't feel less than, yes, right? Sir. And yes, it's the same thing with, with um, you know, in race. There's nobody less than because you're a certain color. Everyone is able to contribute, and, you know, we need everyone in society. So, so that's my take on that, Caleb. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. I, I could go another 20, 30 minutes. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, I sincerely appreciate your effort. Thank you for coming over here. Please stay in contact with us. We'd love to have you back on the show later. Because um, like I said, I, I feel like we could go a good hour. I've got just tons <laughs> of stuff, but I'd love, love to learn from you. But thank you so much. This is an intrusion into to your family, your personal time. Um, you know, you, you have to drive all over and meet with people like me to do this stuff. So we're very grateful. And, and, and thank you for your passion for it. Uh, guys, one more time. Early voting is February 14th through the 25th. Election day is March 1st. Uh, L.J. Francis, State Board of Education, District 2. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you at the next one.